Hey everyone. So what I'm going to be talking about today is time travel. Now, before we talk about time travel and time machines and those awesome um, concepts, we first need to just discuss about what is time. We need to understand time itself. Can it be changed? Can it be manipulated? Obviously, yes, through many of these fictional movies like Interstellar, The Flash, so on and so forth, Back to the Future. So, let us begin. So, our first question is, what is time? Well, time is pretty easy. I mean, time are the seconds and the minutes and the hours we, uh, we look at and measure. But what is an hour? You may say 60 minutes. What is a minute? It's 60 seconds. What is a second? Now right there, everyone gets stumped. Or some people say it's it's a fraction of the Earth's rotation, which is one of the definitions. But here's two more de here's three definitions I found online which are a little bit more specific. So what is a second? A second is the time that elapses between 9.19 times 10 to the 9 cycles of the radiation produced by the transitions of between two levels of a cesium atom. Now, if you look to one of these pictures, a cesium-137 is 10 million times more radioactive than potassium-40. Those are pretty serious decay. <laughs> so, then the second definition of, of second is an electromagnetic field traveling or propagates through 3.00 times 10 to the 8 of meters in a vacuum. Now, if you divide that by second, you got yourself the speed of light or the constant. And then, of course, someone who said about the Earth's rotation being a second, it's 1 over 86, four, one, one over 86,400 of a mean solar day. Mean solar day means um, the Earth is straight, there is no tilt, it's basically straight and it rotates at that speed. Now, what is time? Another definition of time. It could be the side effect of gravity. So if you can see this little picture of the Earth and the satellite, you can see it bending space-time in which the closer you get to Earth, the more central the time becomes, if you know what I mean. If you were to go a little bit outward of Earth, the, that little cone, time will dilate and become different. This is one of the, this is what we call Einstein's theory of relativity, where it's, a it's part of the gravity's gravitational pull, talking about space-time. And one example is a black hole example. So let's say that you are staying in a spaceship and I go towards the black hole and cross over the event horizon. I'm dead. Anyway, so let's just get over that. Um, so you see me. However, once I pass that event horizon, that place, light cannot escape. That means that at that time, Time stops for you, the observer, and I stay in place until eventually I fade away. I turn darken, I darken, and then fade away. Because since light cannot escape the black hole, the information bouncing off doesn't come back to you, and therefore I don't exist anymore. Now I say that time is an illusion. There is no past, there is no present, there is no future. Our brains create them. Which is, which I think is most interesting to me because that makes the most logical sense. When we talk, time isn't, you can't really divide it. It's one constant stream. We create our new time and we already done our old time. So, Every movement, every word that you say, creates a new timeline right away, which is pretty insane. <laughs> so, 
So our past, we describe them as memories or recall them from textbooks or stories when we, when we read it, when we read it. The present is what we are right now. Right now? Or right now? The present is what we are right now. What, what we are doing, what we are thinking, what are you watching? All this, every single thing that you do right now at this very fraction of a second, we, we don't even know what the present is. Is that that moment, that small moment, that's you right then, right now. And it suddenly becomes the past, right there, right now. Now the future is kind of complicated. Um, it's, we can't predict it. We can think of the future. We can. We can look to the future. You can think what you want. In fact, I'm going to tell you that in the future, I will be pressing my next arrow key and take you to the next slide. That's the future right there. Or you could say that, oh, I want to become an astrophysicist. I want to become a doctor. I want to become a nurse. I want to become an engineer. Those, that's our future that you could become. But the future is never set. So this all becomes just an illusion. Now, we have different perspectives of time. Time can speed up or slow down, but does it? Well, think about it. When you're having fun and doing pro productive stuff, time moves by so fast. For example, I consider the chemistry labs to be really fun, and therefore, it would seem that I didn't spend a lot of time there, but it turns out that I've been there for three hours. It just seems like I've been there for an hour. Now, the opposite also is true. So if you are bored or waiting impatiently for something, time slows down for you. And the main cause of this is focus. When you focus on something so important to you and you become, and you become impatient with it, time seems to slow down. However, if you don't focus on time, on the time, it seems to be faster for you. I'm sure pretty, I heard, I'm pretty sure that most of you had heard the saying, a watched pot never boils. Now, age also affects the perception of, of the speed of time. And the reason be, behind that is proportional theory. What it is, is basically you compare your present time as of right now to the average lifespan of another person. So let's say that I'm 18, I'm going to be turning 18, and an average lifespan of a person is 90. If you take the fraction of it and multiply it by 100, you can see that you, you used up a lot of time on a bar. And therefore, it seems that your time seems to speed up. Now, last thing before I continue is this interesting fact about time is that these there are these items called time crystals. They're basically struggles, struct, excuse me, structures that repeat not only in space, like in positions, but also in time, too. They provide a more stable quantum environment and has random heat entropy and extreme vibrations, which are perfect for quantum experiments. And maybe through time crystals, we might be able to understand more about time and maybe even quantum mechanics. Now, time machines, they do exist, actually. Our rockets that astronauts fly on, those are time machines. And so let me give you a little story, a little perspective. So there's been experiments with physicists and atomic clocks. So one atomic clock has been placed on the ground at the same time. At, they're all at the same time. They put one atomic clock on a plane and one atomic clock on the ground. However, when they traveled, it turns out that the atomic clock on the plane seems to move faster than on Earth. And this brings out, brings out to time dilation. And there's two tests, velocity and gravitational. Why I just described is a velocity time dilation. In other words, the faster an object goes, slower time seems to be. Like in the movie Interstellar. And also the gravita and the gravitational 
time dilation is sort of a similar thing. Sort of a similar thing, but it has to do with gravity. Just like in the movie Interstellar, where they're on a planet next to a black hole, and time seems to move faster there than on Earth. This also brings back to the Einstein sphere of relativity. Man, that guy can prove. Now, time machines are possible, but as for going a thousand years in the future or even traveling back to the past, you would need an infinite source of energy. And there is one source that we know of, and that's our sun. It produces an infinite amount of energy due to its fusion and fission. However, we don't know how to harness it yet. So that can't be used to us for now. Now, as for gravity, now for gravity, there are two types, two sort of phenomena that could happen. Black holes. However, black, hole, black holes, we don't really know much about them. We do know they're, they're really strong with gravity and they can, they can create sort of a wormhole between two between the fabric of the universe, but we just don't know much about them yet. And wormholes, it's been theoretically proven to exist, but not in real life. So kind of stuck for now. Now here's some trouble here's some problems with time travel. In order to time travel, you have to be either really massless, like massless, like particles as you can see in one of these pictures, or be as fast as the speed of light. Well, we can't be massless because we wouldn't be ourselves. We wouldn't exist, in other words. <laughs> and we don't know how to harvest the energy, the, un the infinite energy from the sun. So, so far, not good. However, if we could understand the quantum physics, we could possibly travel through time because quantum physics Quantum mechanics are the smallest thing you could think of. They're basically massless, and they can travel. They could travel right at the speed of light. Now, to travel to the past, you would need something faster than the speed of light. And what I mean by faster than the speed of light, I mean theoretically tachyons. Why I say this is because in our universe, there's a absolute, there's a sort of an absolute value type of graph I'm trying to understand it myself but you're gonna have I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research about why do you why traveling to the past requires you to go faster than the speed of light I'm gonna look that up more information if you have any questions just um, let me know on discord so traveling to the past is impossible for now now here's some paradoxes if we do even if we even travel to the past. One of them is the grandfather paradox, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you heard about. And basically, you go back in time, you kill your grandfather, and create some complications. And the results of them are there are two results that could happen. One, you become stuck in a time loop with no beginning and no end. So you build it. You build your time machine, your grandfather dies, your father was never born, you were never born. So that means you never tech, you never create a time machine. Right? That means your grandfather is, is alive, your father is born, you're born, and you travel in time, kill your father, and this whole loop never ends. Or there's a second possibility. There's two timelines. One, where you do exist because you never killed your grandfather, or two, you don't exist because you killed your grandfather. Now, here's two other paradoxes that I want. There's three more paradoxes, but here's another two. Another one is the bootstrap paradox. You send information to the past. In doing so, you create something of no origin with no beginning, no end. And there, and because of that, information you could change history forever and the future unless you got a time machine and get the information before it even reaches out man i wonder if i sound like doc brown <laughs> the third paradox 
is Let's Kill Hitler Paradox. And there's this little comic that you could read about, you could read. It's pretty funny. So let's say you go back in time, you do kill Hitler. Now, there are, there are some possibilities. So one, one, one possibility has two parts. One, you could, have pre you could have prevented the Jews' Holocaust. If I remember correctly, Hitler killed like 6 million Jews. And you could, you could have prevented that. But, but... You have to also consider the possibility you you could have created a bigger one, a bigger Holocaust. We don't know for sure because the future is unpredictable, which it brings us to the second part. Where in doing so, in changing history, we don't know what our future will become. It becomes unpredictable and with lots of consequences. And thirdly, no one will know what you did because Hitler never did a deeds, which means... Hitler is never recognized, never known, and therefore people will think you're insane for killing a person that doesn't exist. Now, one more paradox I want to talk about is the Polchinik's paradox, which is similar with, an, with like a bootstrap paradox, but with an object, which changes the course of history forever. So, if you if you watch Back to the Future, the third part, the third movie. It's about the grandfather Biff brings back a comic, a almanac of all the sports stats and brings it to his past self and becomes a millionaire, which screws up the timeline even more. Man, I can't believe that time, time travel has a lot of references in Back to the Future. Great Scott. <laughs> okay. So to conclude this, what is time? Well, as we said before, a second is what con what's considered the radiation given off by the cesium atom. Or it could be also the rotation of the Earth or the magnetic field traveling over a certain distance. Now, how can, how can someone travel through time? Well, technically, we already have done that, but traveling to the distant future or the distant past so far, it's not plausible because we don't have that kind of technology or knowledge to acquire, required to do such a thing. And the paradoxes and problems of time travel just proves that maybe it's not, maybe the idea of even traveling to the past is not a good idea and shouldn't be talked about. However, we could use our minds, we could use our minds to become time travelers. We can, so, if you just picture the American Revolution, or picture your favorite birthday, you technically already travel to the past. And we could even use our DNA to even see our future, like, um, one of my favorite uh, video games to play, the Assassin's Creed, they use this device which takes your DNA and decodes it all the way back to your ancestors and you can see how they lived back in time. Who knows? Anything is possible. Just it's crazy and funny how our minds may be the key to time travel. That'll be it.